Good morning, good morning. Is anybody listening? Good morning, good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody out to Emmanuel Ministry Church, IMC. Those live on Facebook also. We're glad to have everyone that's attending. Uh, before we uh, go any further, we're going to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. So if you would, bow your heads with me in reverence for the Father that we serve. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the Word of God and how rich it is in our lives. We come today expecting, knowing, God, that your Word is forever settled in heaven and earth and beneath the earth. We come today to understand your Word, to get knowledge of your Word, and take it with us out into the world so that we can make a difference for the kingdom of God. We thank you for it, Father, and as we go into this service, we thank you for the power of God being present, the Spirit of God moving, upon all people we thank you lord for your presence in our lives and that we can worship freely today jesus said him who the sun sets free is free indeed so we're free today to worship we're free today to praise you and we'll give you all the glory god today in jesus name amen i got a few announcements for you uh first time visitors is there anyone here that's a first time visitor if you would raise your hand Anyone? First time visitor? Okay. Well, everybody's been here once before. Uh, the church is open for sanctuary prayer each Sunday from 9 to 9.25 a.m. We have classes for all ages at 6.30 p.m. each Wednesday and 9.30 a.m. on Sundays. Brother Rob and Jamie will have Christian's church or children's church today after praise and worship. And we're thankful for Brother Rob and Jamie. You guys thankful for Brother Rob and Jamie? Hallelujah. Thankful for that. Uh, Roy Crane, you know Roy. Uh, he, he's looking for a, a few more people for the greeters. They'd like for the open doors, smile, welcome people in. So if you'd like to be a part of that, just get with Roy and he can set you up on that one. Uh, also, let's remember to pray for the people going on the women's Emmaus walk and the boys' Christmas flight plus the workers. Our Nancy Bloomfield, Jim's wife, She's probably walking really high right now, but she's on that walk, so let's remember her. The closing is today at 4.30 p.m. at the school, which is a lot closer than it used to be, uh, a lot closer. Uh, the boys' Christmas uh, Friday, April 23rd to Sunday the 25th. Yeah, that's a little different, don't they? So that'll be early Friday, April, 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. Uh, also, it says uh, here we are inviting to go to the Ladies' Day at Wisdom Faith. Donna Laham and Vicki Hobson will be ministering. The meal will be catered. Mark your calendar for Saturday, June the 5th. Uh, more information will be available later. Also, Kathy Wheeler and her sister have invited us to a celebration of life for Mrs. It says... Alice Haney. The memorial will be here on Saturday, June the 12th from noon until 2 p.m. All right. And I believe that's everything today. Is everybody ready to worship? What, what did David say? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's come into the house of the Lord. And that's how I felt this morning. I, I get excited about coming to church because we had a business that didn't let us come to church but now, praise God, we're able to come. So every morning on Sunday, we get up early, and we're just excited to get the opportunity. If you came expecting, you will get what you expected. So praise God today as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, I believe the presence will show up. We don't have no swines in here today, do we? Because there will be some pearls cast out today. I know there will be from the praise team and from the pastor and we won't be trampling on them, but we'll be respecting them. So today as we go into God's house, let's just go in with the presence of God in our lives, in our hearts, and we'll worship together, and we'll give God all the praise, won't we, today? Let's just do a little radical praise today, you know? I remember Kim Clout, where Les is up there, he said, spank that plank, let's spank that plank, so you know, nobody, you got to spank the plank today on the bass, okay? Well, thank God for everybody. Praise God. Let's do it. Y'all ready? It's all yours, brother. Amen. Thank you, sir. Hey, do y'all mind if I share a testimony with you? Um, 
before we get started, if that's all right. There's a young lady um, <coughs> that I worked with. The, she worked in the cafeteria at work, and um, you know, I probably worked with her for two to three years. And you know how you can tell when you see someone you come coming through the line, you see somebody every day, you can tell if they're up or down. But anyway, she had she was a single mother, two kids, and uh, y'all have heard me mention her before. But uh, she was really struggling. She had some uh, sick uh, kids were sick. One of her, her son is uh, allergic to just about everything, and I mean, really swells up and it's uh, life threatening. But um, but anyway, but I had an opportunity to talk to her over the years and just to encourage her. One of the first things that she asked about was uh, when I talked to her about where we went to church and stuff. She said, I used to like to read these daily breads. You know, years ago she had access to these daily breads, and she really loved reading those. And I said, hey, I think we've got some of those at church. I'll bring you one. So I brought her a daily bread, just kind of started. But, um, but just over the years had an opportunity to talk to her and to pray with her to just encourage her. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been trying, she lives in Bowling Green. We've been trying to get her to go to New Life Church there in Bowling Green down on Scottsville Road where my son Nicholas attends. But, um, so just for like a, a two year period almost, I just say, uh, hey, Adrian, can you get over to New Life? I, we were made arrangements for the bus to pick her up. And, but anyway, it just seemed like it never, it never happened, you know, it just never, it never came to pass. But, um, so Carrie and I actually stopped and saw her probably uh, six weeks ago or so. We went down and met with her, uh, visited with her and her kids at the house. And uh, this was on a Saturday evening. We were talking to her about going to church on Sunday morning. And she was, like, nervous. She was just really nervous about going back to church and stuff. And Carrie said, well, I'll go with you. How about if I just drive down and pick you up on Sunday morning and take you to church? So Carrie did that. Again, that's about six weeks ago. So, uh, but since then, she's been going, like, every week, and uh, she's been texting and calling. We've been talking to her some, and uh, last Thursday night, they have, a, they have a Thursday night program. It's called Living Free, um, and the lady that teaches the class has been encouraging Adrian to come to the class. Well, finally, she got to go Thursday night, so, um, but I've been going in at, like, 5 a.m. every morning this week. And I fell asleep early on the couch where she called me like at 10 o'clock at night or something, you know, and I was already in bed. So I texted her the next day. I said, well, I'll call you back after I get off work on Friday. So I called her Friday afternoon. She was so excited. I mean, so excited, you know, about the Lord and just the change. You could just hear, I mean, uh, <coughs> you. I don't want to give her uh, all the details, but she was in a very dark, a very difficult place. But uh, but since she's been going to church, one of the things that she told me, she said, every time they had an altar call, she went. And she's like, Mr. Dennis. She said, I went to the altar. She said, I went to I went to the altar every time they had an altar call. I was there for prayer. But um, but she was so excited. I mean, she was talking like 90 mile an hour. I couldn't get a word in, and she was just. And she was talking about her workplace. She had met somebody, and they were talking about the Lord and. Um, but I finally just, uh, it was, uh, so refreshing. I just started laughing as she was, I mean, she was just talking just nonstop, 90 mile an hour. And, uh, it was just such a blessing to me to hear, to hear that, to hear her testimony, somebody that was without hope, without hope for a long time. She, uh, <laughs> she, <coughs> she really struggled for a while. Uh, my son and I stopped by to see her a couple of weeks ago. Her and her children, her, her youngest son had had an allergic uh, outbreak and he had to go to the hospital. And uh, this was a Sunday evening and then uh, Monday he couldn't go to school. So I called Nicholas. Nicholas lived close by and I said, hey, won't you meet me after work? And we'll go by and see Adrian and pray for the kids. Um, but anyway, we went by and prayed with them and had an opportunity to talk to uh, the little girls about five or six, and the son is uh, four. But we just had an opportunity to talk to them and share with the kids and to pray for them. And uh, 
as we were doing that, uh, Nicholas said, the Lord told him, he said, this is what discipleship, discipleship looks like. And we're supposed to make disciples, right? And sometimes it takes a while. Like I said, this is over a two-year period, just an opportunity to pray with her here and there, you know, just to encourage her, just to bless her. You know, the Bible says that uh, if you read this, uh, the whole purpose of the church, the purpose of the church, if I can read this, hold on, is for edification, edification. Excuse me. But it says here, uh, this is Ephesians 4, 11, uh, verse 11 and 12. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the whole purpose of that, the whole purpose of what the Lord laid out here, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And here's the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So to edify means to build up, to encourage, to lift up. You know, I was just thinking about what she said, that every time the altars were open, every time they had an altar, altar call, she was up front for prayer so it says here in uh, Thessalonians 5 uh, 11 so encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing so encouragement and building up you know we come to church I know there's some folks here that have some difficulties maybe have some struggles maybe you got kids that aren't saved maybe you've got uh, kids that are sick maybe uh, things aren't working out for you financially or in your uh, home or in your uh, relationships, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, this morning we're going to worship the Lord, but I talked to Miss Judy and some others, but uh, we, we need some altar workers. I know we've got folks here that are, that are filled with the Holy Spirit and compassionate and are willing to pray for some folks. But I just think about this young lady going to the altar for prayer every time and just the difference that it's made in her life somebody that was completely hopeless without hope you have to know the situation but you'd have to know the details but it was it, it was bad you know, uh, God loves people. The whole purpose of, for God so loved the world, He sent His Son. For what reason? For what reason? To edify, to equip, to build up. He said, "Those that were," uh, he said, "Today this has come uh, tr uh, true in your hearing." He said, "He said, came to set the captive free." Um, those that were, I forget the word about the hope, uh, to restore hope to the hopeless. But anyway, the Lord is concerned about people. And it takes one at a time. It's one at a time. It's one at a time. He's concerned about people. But as we worship this morning, listen, if you've got something going on, you know, I was reminded, Carrie and I went forward um, uh, there at New Life at a service one time, and they were, they'd got a, an older lady. She's like the the uh, uh, one the oldest elder there at the church. She's been there for you know since the church was established there in Bowling Green, probably thirty or forty years. But anyway, she's late eighties, early nineties. Carrie and I went forward for prayer one service one Sunday evening they had there, and this lady, I'm, she is a prayer warrior. I wish I could have uh, I wish I could have recorded her prayer for us. It was just so encouraging and so uplifting. And just, uh, it, it really was, I, <clears throat> I just cried as she was praying. I mean, it was really just a beautiful prayer. But just uh, praying for God's blessings and God's provision. You know, we need to do the same, right? We just need to 
lift each other up, just encourage. Again, if you've got something going on today, uh, just come forward. You know, Dan, Dan Moeller said recently, the Bible says, uh, greater is he that lives within thee than he that's in the world. Well, who's he talking about that lives within you? Yeah, the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit lives within you, do you think he's just waiting for you to get your pastor calls you me little greasy palms on somebody pastor says uh you think the holy spirit that is within you is just waiting for an opportunity for you to get your hands out he says they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so i think the holy spirit in us is just r raring to go for us to do the work of the ministry for us to equip the saints for us to edify the body to lift up to build up the body of Christ so if that's you if you're the altar worker if you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you're compassionate and you love people we'd invite you to come down first this morning but the others if you if you're struggling today you've got something going on it doesn't have to be anything terrible or you know it could like I said it could be a loved one it could be a child it could be somebody in your family that's sick or you know we know that there's plenty of uh, pain on planet earth here it could just be anything you, s you just need someone to agree with you in prayer this morning we just uh, would invite you to come down the song says my story if I told you my story what's talking about uh, they would hear about the Lord my story includes the Lord and what he's done amen amen if I told you my story you would hear hope that wouldn't let go if I told you my story you would hear love that never gave up if I told you my story you would hear life but it wasn't mine and if i could speak then let it be of the grace that is greater than all my sins someone justice to serve when mercy wins of the kindness of jesus that draws me in for to tell you my story is to tell of me. If I told you my story, you would hear victory over the end. If I told you my story, you would hear freedom that was won for me. If I told you my story, you would hear life overcome the grave. If I could speak, then let it be for the grace that is greater than all my sins of when justice was served. of Jesus that draws me in for oh, to tell you my story is to tell of me this is my story this is my song praise my Savior all the day long this is my story this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. And for the grace that is greater than all my sin. Of when justice will serve, when mercy wins. Of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in. For to tell you my story is to tell. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of it. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of it. Amen. 
Anybody agree? The Bible says they will overcome. How will they overcome? By the blood of the Lamb and the Word. Amen. And they love not their lives unto death. They will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of our testimony. Your testimony is important, right? Don't let anybody take that from you. Don't let anybody steal your testimony, amen. It's important, amen.
set us high above every other enemy that we could face. And we will see the victory that you have for us, Father. We will step forth into battle and we will win every single fight for the name of Jesus. The name that is above every name. The name that will last for all eternity. The name who will conquer all until the end of all of time. You are the beginning, the end, the Alpha and Omega, Father. We praise you today because you are worth it. Death could not hold you. Death could not hold you. It could not hold him, and it will not hold you. Just set free in this place today. Freedom! 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 We receive the freedom of the Lord today. And death could not hold us. Sing it out to him today. Believe it! Death could not hold us. be complete in him no matter what you're facing no matter what you have gone through no matter who has hurt you no matter how much hardship maybe you faced in the last year the Holy Spirit and God he wants you to be complete in everything that you do he wants you to step out and receive freedom he wants you to be able to come into this place and receive everything that you need just like Dennis mentioned earlier because of him stepping out in faith and listening to the Holy Spirit, him and his son, they were able to bring hope to someone's life. The Holy Spirit wants the same thing for you. Just because you attend church every single Sunday doesn't mean that you don't still need something from the Lord. It doesn't mean that there isn't more that he could show you. It doesn't matter how old you are, or how young you are, the Holy Spirit can speak to you just like he spoke to David, just like he spoke to Samuel, just like he spoke to Jesus as he walked the earth. Don't ever be scared to step out in these places of worship because this is a place of freedom, a place of safety, a place of refuge for you. The Holy Spirit has brought you into this place for a purpose and a reason. You're here for this specific time. He could have placed you in any other generation. He could have placed you in any other time period, but he chose you to place you here. So receive what the Holy Spirit is working through anyone and everyone who's working within this church. I know the teachers want to see you succeed. The pastors want to see you succeed. Our worship team wants to see you succeed. But it takes you stepping out in faith. We cannot carry you. We cannot let you piggyback off of our faith. You have to have faith for yourself. You have to stand up and say, Lord, this is what your word says. This is what has been taught to me. This is what I will stand on and I will see it come to pass. So Father, we just thank you that you're still working in our lives. We thank you, Father, that you are still providing hope to the hopeless. 
And we thank you, Father, that you are growing us as a body of Christ. And anyone who ever has a need, Father, let us show the light of Jesus in their life so they can receive the hope that you paid for on the cross for us. We just thank you, Father, that you are developing us and you're helping us to come with a humble heart and just lay down those things that maybe have been holding us back so we can bring forth a proper praise and a proper worship to you and so we can pick up those things that have been taught before us and we can use those things and they wouldn't be just be tossed to the wayside or fall in deaf ears, Father. We just thank you for how you've worked in this place today. We just thank you as we keep entering in and we keep worshiping you that you're just going to keep showing up in this place. Just let us honor you in everything that we do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray all of these things. And all who are in agreement said amen. Amen. One other testimony goes along with exactly what Ransom is saying. Uh, my son Nicholas, he's 28 now. He's the evangelism outreach minister at New Life Church there in Bowling Green. He called me one Sunday morning. It was about six years ago. I was war I was at work. He was at church, and he had went forward. This is the same thing we're talking about. He had went forward uh, during a time of worship had someone pray for him and he called me after the service was over and he said dad it's a little, little little black lady that prayed for him he's like I didn't know that she had that kind of power you know he just he felt the power of the Holy Spirit as she prayed for him and that may have been the first time that he really encountered the power of the Holy Spirit but as she prayed for him he was he was just blown away but um but what I'm saying is that was six years ago, and the f he he was in um, he was in financial management class classes that uh, major was his at Bowling Green uh, me, Western Kentucky University. Two years into it, he said the Lord told him uh, he wanted him to call him into ministry. So he quit uh, going to school and started devoting uh, eight hours a day to spending time with the Lord, reading the Bible working on worship, worshiping the Lord. Uh, but six years, you know, four years into that, he's the evangelism outreach minister at New Life Church. So what I'm saying is it starts here at the altar. The Bible says, uh, <coughs> if you read in the book of Acts about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it said that there was a work going on in Samaria when Peter and John heard about the work that was going on in Samaria, they immediately went there. Philip was there ministering. People were getting saved, uh, filled with another, uh, excuse me, saved. Demons were cast out. People were healed. Peter and John, when they heard, it said they immediately went there and they asked him, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they had said they didn't know that there was a Holy Spirit. But they prayed for them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the helper, the comforter, the counselor, the paraclete. The Bible says those that are the, the sons and daughters of God will be led by the Spirit of God. He's our leader. He leads us and guides us into all truths. Now another thing this morning, the reason I said all that, sorry to, to interrupt our worship here this morning, but the reason I said all that, if you're here this morning... And you don't have the, you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit like they were in the book of Acts. There was multiple occasions there where they laid hands on them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you could be missing out on some help. You might be missing out on some counseling. You might be missing out on some comforting. Okay? You are, right. You are. Right, good point. You are missing out. Uh, a leader, a guide. The Holy Spirit is all these things. Jesus said, it's exceedingly important that I go. His disciples did not want Jesus to leave planet Earth. He said, it's exceedingly important that I go, guys. Listen, they want to hang on to him, want him to stay there. You'd be the same way if we got to spend three years with Jesus and saw what he did. We'd want him to stay. He said, listen, guys, it's exceedingly important. I got to go so that, one, so that you can receive the gift the Father promised. The Holy Spirit is referred to as the gift. He's a gift. How many people like to get gifts? Amen. 
The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, he is the gift the Father promised. Jesus said, I got to go so that he can come. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is here. Maybe you haven't received him. If you haven't, we're, we're just going to leave the altars open and encourage you to come forward. I know there's people here that are filled with the Holy Spirit, that are compassionate, that are loving, that would love to pray for you this morning. Amen. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, Praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Holy to your name, oh
exalted far above all God. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above Father, we thank you that you are our Father. We thank you for the price you paid to get us in this position. And we don't take it lightly, Father. Thank you so much for the death of your Son, for the burial and for the resurrection of your Son, and that he's living inside of us today. That we have this eternal hope. We have this wonderful hope within us that we're not alone. You're always with us to help us, to lead us and guide us and and uh, just everything we need is within us by your Spirit. So we thank you, Lord. We call forth for that wisdom, call forth for that knowledge, call forth for those gifts of the Spirit to manifest ourselves in our lives that we could do your works as you said we're to do. So we thank you for this gathering together today, for the stories we've heard, for the encouragement we've heard, and for the worship that we've in enjoyed today. We pray that you would uh, just further us this, in this service, that the move of your spirit would continue and work in the hearts and lives of this people for thy glory and for their good. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have that this morning, you want to worship the Lord with, we thank you for your steadfastness there. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Chrissy. The Lord is good. And because we serve a God of the impossible, All things are possible. Amen. Nothing's impossible with him. Amen. Almighty God, my Redeemer, my hiding place, my safe refuge, no other name like yours, Jesus. Amen. Who's going to kick this bad boy off this morning? That's you. All right. Yeah. Mm. Almighty God, my Redeemer, my hiding place, my safe refuge. No other name like Jesus. No power can stand against you. My feet are planted on this rock, and I will not be shaken. My hope, it comes from you alone. My Lord and my salvation. Your praise is always on my lips. Your word is living in my heart. And I will praise you with a new song. My 
so will bless you, Lord. You fill my life with greater joy. Yes, I delight myself in you, and I will praise you with a new song. My soul will bless you, Lord. Come on and bless the Lord and stir yourself up this morning. Raise your hands and just bless the Lord. My feet, my feet are planted on this rock, and I will not be shaken. My hope, it comes from you alone. My Lord and my salvation, your praise is always on my lips. Your word is living in my heart. And I will praise you with a new song. My soul will bless you, Lord. You fill my life with greater joy. Yes, I delight myself in you. And I will praise you with a new song. My soul will bless you, Lord, when I'm weak, you make me strong. And when I am poor, I know I am rich, for in the power of your name. Let me hear you say it now. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. Your praise, your praise is always on my lips. Your word is living in my heart. And I will praise you with a new song. My soul will bless you, Lord. You fill my life with greater joy. Yes, I delight myself in you. And I will praise you. With a new song, my soul will bless you, Lord. When I weak, you make me strong. When I am poor, I know I am rich, for in the power of your name, all things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. Amen. Amen. Not anything that he's promised that's impossible today. Every promise of God is possible. Do you know what he's promised you? Now, if you don't know what he's promised you, how are you going to take hold of it? you got to have some knowledge, haven't you? Praise the Lord. Come on in with it, boys. Boys, men, gentlemen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Our God is a mighty good God. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, it's our good pleasure to be here today, Lord, to worship you and sing praises to you and just celebrate the victory we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we're just forever grateful for our wonderful Savior, Lord. And Father, I just want to thank you that you being Almighty God who created the heavens and the earth and everything that's in them with your spoken word you didn't choose to remain a god that's far off and unapproachable but you made it possible that we could approach you and have a personal relationship with you all because of our wonderful savior who humbled himself and came to this earth as a man fully god yet fully man and suffered died and bled a terrible gruesome death for us because he loved us lord i'm so thankful so thankful that while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. So I'm thankful, Lord, the story didn't end there, that he did rise from the grave and is alive forevermore, as we will be too if we choose to trust him as our Savior. I'm just so grateful, Lord. And Father, we want to obey you, and we bring these tithes and offerings today and lay them at your feet. We ask for your blessing upon them, and it just be multiplied, and people's lives be changed by the giving done here today, Lord. We love you with all of our hearts, Lord, and pray this prayer in the majestic name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, 
Where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Are you glad? Well, I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. He saved me. He saved me. He saved me, yes, he saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. And you know when he saved me, he healed me. He filled me, he thrilled me. There's not any promise that God has made humanity through the Messiah that didn't become mine the moment he saved me. It's all in there. Amen. It's all in Him, and in Him we live, in Him we move, in Him we have our being. And if not for Him, you just got a religion. Amen. We don't want religion. Amen. We want that relationship with God. You know, the number one thing that it's our privilege and honor to work towards, and that's restoration of people that's separated from God. You know, when you see a home or you've been around homes and you see the separation where that the love is lost and separation of the heads of the home, it's just a sad time. It's not a good time. People are not generally happy when it's separation. It's just all downhill. But praise God for restoration. You see somebody that's in love or been in love and something has happened to, to, to cut that off that you see the restoration of it. And it's so wonderful to see the joy back in that home and back in the, And you know, God wants us to be restored. He wants us to be connected. I've been thinking about the, the things of Jesus, and he said, the, these works and greater will you do. And then he said, because I go to the Father. Tell me a work you could do that's greater than the ones Jesus did. only work you could do that's greater and the one he wants us to be very 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 active in is leading people to the saving grace of being born again that's the greater work amen if we spend our time and our tears and i i know that all the promises of god belongs to everybody no doubt but we can cry and moan and groan because we don't see the deaf hearing and the blind are seeing and the lame are walking and there's people all around us going to hell, we ought to get a little bit more concerned about the lost. Because a, a saved person gets to go to heaven for eternity, but a lost person ain't. And Jesus said he wants us to keep the main thing the main thing. And Jesus came for this purpose, to restore us to God. We had been disconnected by sin. Sin brought a disconnect. Jesus came to pay the price for that sin so we could be reconnected to God. And when you're connected to God, everything that God has can be yours. It comes with the life of God. When you're born again and the life of God comes inside of you, everything that's in God is in you. It's a matter of you drawing that out to your outward man. How many Christians in here today? You see that many deposits of God in this house today? Because if, you, if you're a Christian, God is living inside of you. You've got God on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. The Bible said it's God that's working in us of his will and purpose. It says to work out your salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is God who is working in us of his will and his purpose. We're all a piece of work. Amen. I mean, he's still working on me. You better hope he is, ain't you? Amen. The little song says, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It only took a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth, Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, because he's still working on me. 
Think about that. Wonder why it's not just a Zapola and it's done. If he's working on us and he can make the universe in six days and then take a break, how come it's so hard working on us? It's because of us. It's because of us that he's having the difficulty. There's nothing too hard for God. But you know, if you won't believe, the Bible says if you won't believe, you don't get nothing. If you don't believe, you won't get nothing. Book of James. Book of James. I've been in ministry a long time. And I've seen people that called and called and called and cried and cried and cried. Took up time, bunches of time, lots of time. It's all right. Times, it's okay. But they didn't do nothing. They wanted you to do something. <laughs> they wanted you to do something. I remember this one guy, he come to church once in a while. I was telling Jim about it last night. Just pointed out where he lived. He'd, get on, he'd throw a drunk, and then he'd call me, want to talk about the Bible. And he, he'd talk, talk. A lot of times we'd done the bed, sleep, he'd call, want to talk about the Bible. Talk, 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 talk. And I told him, I said, now, called his name, I said, I don't want you to call me like this. If you want to come and sit in the church and listen, be in Sunday school and listen, be attentive and listen, talk to me about questions, you got a question about that, we'll help you. Don't be calling me in the middle of the night. And for sure enough, when you're drinking, don't call me. So it wasn't, he, he, he didn't call for a few days, and then he called. Well, I could tell he's a major drunk. So he, I, to, I told him, I said, now you ain't been to church. You hadn't, you, you didn't bother me till the middle of the night when you get all sipping on your booze. And here you are again calling me, and I told you not to. He said, well, I'm just going to kill myself. I said, you ain't going to do that. He said, I will too. I said, well, pour it to it. That'll end it then. We won't be talking no more. He said, I got a gun with me. I'm serious. I said, let her happen, Captain. Boom. I said, you missed, didn't you? He said, yeah. <laughs> Shot a hole right through the roof of his trailer. I said, you can run your coax down through that hole and put you an antenna pole in there. <laughs> That's the last time he called me. He didn't bother me no more. But see, you know, if you don't get serious about the things of God, if you won't get serious enough to be concerned about it when it's not a service, but all of a sudden you're all that concerned about it, well, I tell you, it's what you do from Sunday to Sunday that's going to make a difference. And I certainly want you to come and be and prayed for and be, but you've got to help yourself. Amen. You have to help yourself. And you have to be concerned about the concerns of Jesus. Somewhere or another, we have to get active in the fields, fields of harvest for the Lord. We've got to come up with some kind of individual, just like a Brother Dennis talked about working with this lady for all that time. You've got to get concerned for somebody. Compassion moved him, and that's why he did that. And we ought to have compassion in us for somebody. Somebody should be heavy on our mind enough that we spend some knee mail send some time on our knees and praying for them and asking the Lord how to reach them. Because Jesus said that's the most important thing and it's the greatest work. It's the greatest work. We've got ourselves fairly prosperous. We've got ourselves in the decent shape in this way. What about being concerned on the, for the thing that he came for? The main thing. Jesus said in Luke, I believe it's 1910, for this reason, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Are, are you, are, am I, are you, are we, got anybody on our mind that we know is lost that we're praying for? What is, what is driving our prayer? What is controlling our prayer and our thought time? And what are we seeking after? I guarantee you 99% of it is not the lost. We want better this and better that and easier this and easier that. I don't think that's, I don't think that's really pleasing to the Father. 
Have we lost vision of the reason he came? We can't afford to. If we do, I apologize. I, it's, it's my job to keep us on point. And I'm trying to do that. I want you to be saved, healed, delivered. Every promise of God is yes and amen. When you bring somebody to salvation, you brought them to everything that God offers. Amen. And when you get them saved, it's all up there. It's like prego, spaghetti sauce, it's all in there. Amen? You just gotta, you just gotta believe and receive it. And if you won't believe it, you can't receive it. If you won't grab it and blab it, you won't have it. Amen? Amen. You gotta take a hold of it. Like a, like a, a crappie of minner. Just for you, Terry Smith. <laughs> He's watching by this thing here. You got to take a hold of it and, 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 and pursue it with all of your heart. You can't just be flippant about it or penny any about it or it don't really make any difference. Well, it, if it makes enough difference to, for you to put concerns in somebody else's life about it, then you ought to get real serious about it. Amen. James said, count it all joy, verse 2, chapter, first chapter, verse 2, count it all joy, talking to the brethren, when you fall into various trials and temptations. What's your Bible say? Divers temptations, tests, and trials. Count it all joy. I mean, if we can't shout about Jesus, how are we going to shout about trials and temptations? Amen. We can't get excited about Jesus. Probably not going to get excited about your tests, trials, and temptations. Count it all joy when you fall into these problems, knowing this, that the testing of your faith worketh patience. So apparently God wants patience in our life. Apparently. Amen. So let's get them. Matter of fact, when you got Jesus, you got that too. Love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, self-control, patience. It's all in the characteristics of Jesus Christ. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be what? It's hard to say, isn't it? Perfect. You ever, you ever got a hold of a bite of a good steak and it was just perfect? I mean, that's memorable, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, something that's perfect, that's just, hmm. God wants us to be his perfect church. He wants us to be his perfect body. He wants to live and move in a perfect body. Don't you? I want my body to be perfected. I don't want my head to just be screwed on something that's all messed up. I want my body to be perfect so when I have a suggestion, my limbs will reach out there and take a hold of it. But God is somewhat limited without a perfect body. He has ideas and dreams and visions that he wants to implement, but if his body is not in the position or the shape to do it, he's limited. Well, if he's got one thing on his mind and the body's got something else on his mind, then it's limited again. We need to get the mind of Christ and have our mind on what's on his mind because he has control of the body. Amen. And he can't do it without us. I know that's, that's big to say, but we've got to recognize that we are the body of Christ. He's the head and we're the body so he's somewhat limited without a body that'll do what he says. Amen. So it's imperative that we listen to him, be connected to him. And I'm just telling you right now, the devil is doing everything and anything he can do to disconnect you from him. He knows what, what can happen if we get connected and we stay tight, connected to God and respond to him. All things become possible. As long as he can get in our head and mess with us and get us thinking about things that's really of lighter, lesser value. Get our attention off on menial things, little bitty things that's not the devil's successful. 
We've got to control our thoughts and get our thoughts hooked up to his mind. Take on the mind of Christ and pursue his interest with all of our hearts, all of our minds, and all of our souls. If any man lack wisdom, what does he say to do? And what does he do? So if you lack wisdom, what do you do? You ask God for wisdom. Don't raise your hand. Anybody here lack wisdom about something? I believe God's got, he's an all wise, all wise heavenly father. God has wisdom for every situation and in every, there's not anything you will encounter that the wisdom of God can't handle. Amen. If we ask God who giveth to all men, so praise God, you can raise your hand, I'm one of them all men. Even if you're a woman, man, you're an all men. Amen. Amen. He giveth liberally to all people and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. But here's the situation, and here's many times why things don't work out like they should. Lack of faith. Lack of confidence. Lack of trust. Amen. We must ask in faith believing, nothing wavering, for he that for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven and the wind tossed. Let no man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So something to work on, isn't there? There's always something to work on. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul preached Jesus and him crucified. He said, I know not anything else to talk to you about except Jesus and him crucified. And he talked to him with power and demonstration of the Spirit of God. There was power and demonstration of the things of God there in Paul's life that went on in his ministry. And, and I think we, we've got to be understanding there are things going on. It may not just be the thing you want to see go on, but that doesn't mean there's not things going on. Amen. We all have our, quote, pet peeve. Sure, if somebody got healed, we'd want to say, well, why didn't God heal this one? Well, if he got it, why didn't that one get it? Well, I, I don't know. Just thank God for that one that got it. Why did Jesus walk over all them people to that pool and help that one guy up, tell him to take him to bed and go home? I don't know. But I'm thankful that he got that one. And God's not a respecter of person. If he got that, and maybe you're next. You've got to believe. He's able, he's able to get that, and he's able to get this one. We've got to stay in faith, being disgruntled, and all the whys will answer nothing and will not get a move of God. We have to stay in faith, trusting, believing, acknowledging that God is all-powerful. So the main thing is to get people connected, and I believe that's what Paul's ministry was about. God used lots of things in his life to draw people's attention, especially in the, in the when early stages of the Bible. We see it really a lot that God did a lot of demonstration to bring people to, uh, to uh, wanting and desiring. And you know, and I don't, I don't think it's impossible for that today. I, I want to believe that's very possible. Amen. We want the signs and wonders of, of the ministry when the word is preached. Jesus said, you go preach the word and I'll perform the signs. Now, I don't know about you, and, and, and you know, I, I understand that insanity is doing the same thing all the time, expecting different results. But when you're preaching everything you know to preach about Jesus Christ, that's all I know to do is continue to preach everything about Jesus Christ. And I have to trust the signs that's, that are there. I may not see the sign. I may not see how that person is growing how that person is developing. But you see over the period of time people's lives that are changed and the betterment that comes. And you have to trust the word that you preach and trust the spirit that leads you to preach the word that you preach. And that's all I know to do. That's all I know to do. So I'm going to keep on preaching unless the Lord gives me something else to say. I'm going to keep on preaching what he tells me to preach. And that's Jesus Christ and him crucified for the sins of the world. And that's the fact that anybody that receives the Lord Jesus Christ, every promise of God is yes and amen to every single believer. 
If you're born again, if you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, every promise of God belongs to you. If he promised it in the Messiah, you can claim it. You can name it, claim it, grab it, and blab it. It belongs to you. Amen? You can praise him for it when you don't see any evidence of it because you know it's yours. Because why? He said it was yours. Amen? So, hallelujah. Can we continue to receive from God when we have these moments of disconnect in our belief system? Now, I know sin disconnects you. The Bible says in Isaiah that your sins have separated you from God. Your iniquities have separated you from God. Now, I believe Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be sin to fix that. Our sins have been remitted in Jesus Christ. Amen? I said amen. amen. Our sins are removed. Look over in Revelation chapter 1. Jesus hadn't washed us in our sins. He's washed us from our sins. Now if we see ourselves sinners, we're not going to believe God. We see ourselves in sin. We're not going to believe God. We're not going to stay with something because our sinful mindset will help us to get in an unbelieving position and we won't receive anything. Right. Revelations 1 and 5, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the, of the, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He has washed us from our sins. So as I look at that, I say when I'm in Christ, my sins are remitted. My sins are removed. If anybody walks in the light, if anybody follows after the light, his, the blood of Jesus continually, according to John, continually washes us from our sins, does it not? Now, I don't know about you, but I think because I'm washed from my sin, there's no reason for me to go out there and gallivant around in it again. Amen. We ought to be separate from sin. We ought to be separate from sinners. We ought to separate ourselves from it. Is that right? John said, this is the message which we declare of him, 1 John chapter 1, and declare of him unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness... We lie. Well, I don't know about you, but where I was raised, if you lie, that's a sin. I don't know. Does that, does that make sense to you? If you're lying, that's a sin. Well, we shouldn't sin, should we? If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, so what's he saying? We ought to be walking in the light as he's in the light. In other words, we need the mind of Christ. We need to be so connected to God that God can speak into our hearts and say, no, don't do that. Don't participate in it. Don't go there. Don't fellowship with that. Right? Huh? Is that right? I mean, he, we ought to have the mind of Christ to the point that he has control over the vessel. We've been bought and paid for. Our bodies are not ours. They belong to him. Amen. He has the title deed. And really, he didn't save us so we could just build a plantation and have a nice time on earth. Now, he wants us to be a witness for him. He wants us to have things, but not things have us. Amen? Now, when you think about the bride, and bride, uh, bread, I watched that show, and you think about the Galilean bride and how Jesus spoke to them that he was going away. He said, I will not supper this vine again until I sup in my father's house. So what do he mean by that? Well, in that Galilean wedding, that young man goes to the father's house and he builds on. He builds on to the father's house. He builds a place for his bride. When he comes back to get his bride, he's taking her to the father's house. Jesus said, in my father's house, there's many mansions. He's coming to get us to take us to what? Father's house. He knows not when he's coming. The angels don't know when he's coming. Nobody knows when he's coming except when the father said go. Right? So 
We, we understand that. So Jesus has prepared a place or is preparing a place for us in the Father's house and he will wholesale come and get us someday. Now, can we say praise God for that? Now, what's our responsibility while he's gone? We're to be ready. For we know not the day nor the hour that he returneth. Amen. Now, my Bible tells me in red letter, be praying that you're worthy to escape the wrath that's coming. It tells me that there was 10 virgins that had all in their lamp and half of them wasn't ready when he came. What's all that mean? Well, it tells me there's a disconnect going on. Somebody's getting involved in other things other than the main thing. As I watched that movie, that bride, she had the, the credit card or whatever she needed of that day to get her garment, to pick out her wedding dress and prepare her when she had these attendants to help her. And once she got that wedding dress, once she got that on, her mind and her body and everything about her was all about Jesus coming back. All about that groom coming to get her. Every day, did I miss this, Brad? Every day she put that wedding dress on. Every day she prepared herself as this. This is the day of his return. I guarantee you day after day after day, she longed for him to come. She was longing. She was, she was earnestly believing to, this to be the day of his return. Is that the bride type? You can talk about Jesus' return and people say, oh, I, I'd like to see my granddaughter graduate. Well, you know, I just believe little Johnny, I believe he'll make a really Really good scientist. I'd like to see him grow up. How many Christians are longing for his return? How many of us are just, just excited, excited every day? This could be the day that he comes. You women, when you was getting ready for your wedding day, did you just happen to forget, oh, was that today? I, I thought that's next Thursday. Huh? Did any of you forget your wedding day? Did you forget to go get you a nice pair of slippers? Cinderella? Did you forget to go get you a nice dress and tell a few people now, I'm fixing to get married. Two o'clock, don't you be late. Of course you did. You was excited about it. You was earnestly looking forward to that time. Oh my goodness, the church. The church ought to be earnestly looking for Christ's return. I don't think there's hardly any of us got a glimpse about it. Research says now that less than 2% of the sermons that's preached even alludes to his return. 2%. So no wonder a church wouldn't be looking for it. It's got smothered out in all this junk. Huh? Oh, man, there's nothing more important for you and me today than to be ready for his return. And while we're getting ready, we can share the good news. I don't think we have to just get that dress on and stay in a straight jacket trying to keep the wrinkles out of it till he comes. Huh? It's more than that, isn't it, Brad? It's not just putting on an outward garment. There's a preparation I mean, I remember Linda, she smelled good. She didn't only look good, she smelled good. Amen. You got to put on an aroma of the Lord. Worship and praise, longing. I remember in some Bible studies we've had, in home Bible studies, I've seen those ladies that were such worshipers, they was longing for him to return. It was so strong in them, and they just... They was just longing for, to worship him and to praise him. I think about the one that, that worshiped him and washed his feet with her hair. 
She'd had something that happened to her, didn't she? What happened to her was so precious and so powerful that she was giving her all to that man. Maybe you was just barely saved. Maybe you was just almost good enough to get to heaven without being saved. Maybe it don't mean that much to you. But if you would really see, you were wretched and naked and poor and blind. And we ought to really appreciate Jesus. Are we coming down to that layout of sin, mindset of a church that thinks we're rich, thinks we've got everything and don't need anything, but yet he said you're what? Wretched, naked, and blind? Dear God, if that's us, shake us in our boots. If we are that church, I don't want to be recognized as that church, do you? Yeah. Heavens no. I don't know what to say. Except God loves us. There's a job for us. I think if we would fall in love with those that he's in love with, the lost, the maimed, the halt, the lame, the blind, especially the lost, and go for them. Make an effort to reach the lost in our, our area here. A real earnest. You know, we used to almost ridicule the people that sung what we call the old embalmed hymnal songs and, and talked about preaching the revival and preached, you know, hell hot, heaven sweet. Maybe they had some more sense than we thought they had. They used to sing them old songs. Why not tonight? But you know, they were singing those songs, but I can remember my parents and grandparents during the day praying for people. Huh? I remember my daddy, during revival time, he'd never cut a field of hay down. He didn't cut no tobacco during revival time. We milked and we went to church. We dedicated ourselves. Maybe they had some more sense than we thought they had. Most all of us come out of that time. Done pretty good for us, didn't it? Maybe they didn't talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. How much has it done for you? Have you how many people you led to the Lord with that spirit that's on you? I'm not ridiculing, but honestly, what do, we, what do we fill with the Spirit for? If it's not for soul in it, huh? It should be mainly for soul winning. I give you power that you can be a witness for me in all, of, all the area. We just want somebody to get filled with the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues, and boy, when they do that, they got it. If everybody that's been filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in other tongues since we've been in church here, this place would be packed. That's not the answer unless you use it. Just to be filled and speak, you haven't arrived. You just started. It's what you do with it every day, every day, every day. Amen? Yes, I want people to be filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. Absolutely. But why? So they can be a Pentecostal? Well, praise God. God loves Pentecostals. But I believe Pentecostals ought to be about the Father's business, don't you? Gifts of the Spirit in operation, the manifestation, leading us and guiding us and directing us, tapping on our shoulder in the middle of a work day, huh? speaking to us about things. God's good God. And I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love the church, I love everybody. I'm not mad at nobody but the devil. And maybe me, for I seem like I have not guided this church as I should have guided them. We must be about the soul winning of this community. Amen. We're known for some things. We put another 20,000 pounds of food in the county this week. I mean, we're known for that. That's good. Nothing wrong with that. We're known for some things. But I don't think we're known to be a soul winning station. We should be. We should reach this community for the Lord Jesus Christ.
So I want to pray for us all. I want to pray for us to have eyes and ears and a heart of compassion for the lost. And for those that's not involved in the church of any kind at all. There's a disconnect. Amen? And how are you going to get somebody healed? How are you going to get a miracle working in somebody that's a disconnected? We need to get them reconnected. Amen? Reconnected. Father, give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us today. We repent because we've allowed the toys and the trinkets and the bells and the whistles of the things that belong to us to speak louder than the lost souls around the world. Break our hearts, if you have to, Lord, that we would have a, a burden for a lost person, that we would have a desire for a person who is undone, away from you, lost. Give us a heart's cry for our loved ones and others around this community that knows you not, that is not enjoying the richness of being your child. Help us, O oh Lord, to be about your business in whatever capacity, gifting, and calling that you've given to us. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, God, with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul. And I know because of what you've done through Jesus, you said yourself, we're complete. We're complete in him as he is complete. And nothing is impossible with him that has saved us. Father, I thank you for salvation and all that it brought to us. Saved, healed, delivered, prospered, all the things. May we dig into those truths and latch a hold of them so that when things come knocking at our door, it won't bring a disconnect, but we'll stay connected to the flow of the Spirit of God and the life of God flowing through us into our even outward man to bring perfection in thy sight and for thy glory. I thank you for these children, Father. I thank you for these people that has a hunger to teach and to minister to these children, these young ones, oh God. We thank you for people that will devise plans, that will listen to you, and give loud visions and dreams to come forth to keep these young people in thy arms and in thy, in thy love and in thy care, O oh God. I thank you for our elders and I thank you for our deacons and I thank you for all of our workers, O oh God, that you would fill us with your spirit and wisdom. You said if we lack wisdom, ask. So Lord, we ask you in the sweet name of Jesus, for vision and for wisdom of this ministry. How can we move this ministry in the way that you would move it if you was here as the pastor? If you was here as the elders, how would you move this ministry forward? We all, Father, are needing your wisdom and understanding, not just to come to church, as Brother Josh Jones said, I'm not just going to come to church and sit there. Then, Lord, give us wisdom of what to do with the Josh Joneses, what to do with all these people, that they can be motivated, moved forward to reach this community and let the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ shine forth. I give you thanks. I give you praise. We love you, Father. We want to do your will, O oh God. We want this place to be full of the life and the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive us wherein we failed. Restore us, restore us, O oh God. We love you, Jesus, and we do long for thy return. Not to just get us out of here, 
but we just want to see the face of the one that saved us by his amazing grace. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. altar's open if you want to come and pray of course you feel free to do so